Hi everyone, it's Simon Keeling here at weatherweb.net. Thanks again for watching. It's Wednesday the 23rd of July. Now, just a reminder that as always, the site's completely free of charge for to use, as are all the charts, etc. But um, we like you coming back, using the site when you can, using the charts, etc. And telling your friends about us. Because the more you use the site, the more adverts we can put in front of you. And that means it generates more revenue that keeps the site free of charge. And it also attracts advertisers to the site as well. So thanks for doing that. Um, hope you've had a good morning. Um, some amazing effects around the coasts actually the UK this morning because as temperatures fell inland it meant that the coasts were warmer and we got uh, catabatic winds setting up where we get winds flowing from the land to the sea so it's the opposite of a sea breeze effect and this uh, morning was a classic example of that around the country. So if you're on the coast, you will certainly have felt that effect. Now, uh, talking to the coast, sea surface temperatures um, looking like this. Um, these are the mean temperatures at the moment. So some really warm temperatures around the UK coasts. Um, these orange colours here across Southern Ireland and across the uh, southwest of England um, showing temperatures of uh, into the low 20s and um, I was in the sea yesterday off the western coast of Wales, so just in here and that's showing temperatures of uh, 23 degrees and believe me it feels every single degree of that it feels like you're swimming in the Mediterranean. North Sea is warm as well and um, not quite so warm water as you'd expect across the uh, northeastern parts of Scotland running down through uh, southwestern Scotland here typical temperatures more around the 14 to 16 mark but it really is within this sort of area here that we're seeing these um, very warm sea temperatures. Now they're at an impact because if we get cold air coming in aloft across the top of that, it destabilizes the atmosphere, that generates thundery showers. And of course we saw an example of that uh, during the course of the last weekend where the uh, Spanish plume, the warm air at surface levels was aided by that warm water as a cold area of air came uh, in from the Atlantic and was able to trigger off those thunderstorms. We may get an example of that as well again late on this week, although probably not to the extent that we saw um, during uh, last weekend. But it's interesting to see how the models are developing things just at the moment. Um, this is from the MeteorCenter.com site, and this is a comparison of various different models. So in the top left-hand corner here, we've got the Canadian CMC. We've got the GFS here in the top right. We've got ECMWF here in the bottom left. We've got the UK Met in the uh, bottom right. Now you'll see the UK Met disappear on the next set of charts because they only go out, um, actually another one, they'll disappear on the set of charts after the next one because they only go out to 144 hours. But this is useful to compare between the various different models. You see how they're all in fairly good agreement at um, day five, which is, uh, this is the chart for next Monday. And uh, what they're showing us is basically this high off towards the southwest, look at trough off towards the east of the country. That's what um, will probably bring cooler conditions into the early part of next week for most. And then um, the 144 hour forecast. So this is for Tuesday. And again, reasonable agreement um, between the various models. The ECMWF certainly wanting to make more of this trough off towards the east, as does the UK Met. You see the relation there between those two models. So more of a northwesterly flow, but the high hanging off towards the west and the south. So trying to keep these um, generally fair conditions going, but super critical as to how close this low becomes to the north and the west of Scotland because that will depend on how far south any cloud and rain comes. And then Wednesday you see now the UK Met chart has disappeared uh, looking like this. You notice on here how uh, the uh, GFS wants to accentuate that trough off towards the west. ECMWF does it of sorts, actually cuts off a cold pool down here south of, the, well actually over the Azores. The uh, Canadian making less of it, trying to flatten out the trough and make more of the cutoff over the Azores. But this is going to be really critical as to what happens to this trough. And then into next Thursday, um, this is uh, again showing, look, this trough accentuated here off towards the west of the country, both on the GFS and on the ECMWF. And you know what? I think this is the one that we've really got to be taking notice of. Um, I think the Canadian probably underplays it too much. So I think this is the, the way we have to see things. Um, interesting that trough is in there, even though pressure remains relatively high. You can see there the uh, ridge that's building in from the Atlantic here uh, through the UK at that time. So we get in this trough cutting through the uh, the ridge coming in from the Atlantic. Um, 
The GFS doing something similar, although it makes the trough, um, or rather it makes the ridge stronger. The axis of the ridge certainly stronger against that trough. But look, we've got low pressure over the central parts of France again, and that's thundery low, basically. So it's trying to get this idea going again during the back end of next week, so this v into the early part of August of a thundery breakdown trying to take place. And the forecast chart for Friday the 1st looking like this. Look, there's the trough through the country, although the um, Canadian keeps it further to the west, ECMWF has it over the western sides of the country as well. So this idea of this breakdown taking place from the west is one that the uh, models are certainly trying to get going at the moment, even though, as you can see here, look, the high remains, or as far as the ECMWF tries to do, the high remains up towards the north, but it tries to create this low further south, and then this easterly flow, with a southeasterly feed at surface levels, bringing in thundery outbreaks of rain. The, um, the um, GFS doesn't do that. The GFS actually wants to bring in a cold front so it actually wants to bring a front southwards like so through the country and that to bring the outbreaks of rain and thunderstorms across the south but I think we've got to go with the ECMWF on this one because it just looks more believable this idea of the southeasterly flow at the surface easterly flow up at upper levels trough coming in cooler air aloft and this thundery breakdown and it tries to hold that theme as well, look, as we head in towards Saturday the 2nd, of course. So that's the start of Cows Week as well, Saturday the 2nd. Um, showing the trough out towards the west here. All the models actually in agreement that that's what's going to happen, that that trough is going to be there. Um, and I think really we've got to go somewhere in between the Canadian and the ECMWF on this one. Um, and they tending to show... The idea of wetter conditions out towards the north and the west, breaking down all the time with these thundery showers. Thundery showers for the east and south as well, but the high trying its best to hold on towards the north. So it's going to be an interesting one to see. And if we look at the CFS, um, this is taking us through um, into phase 7 around about the 1st. Brings us into phase 8 around the 6th and then takes us into back into phase 1 around the 13th and then eventually into phase 2 around the uh, 20th of August. Now, what does that mean? Well, I'm going to keep you hanging on and uh, tell you more about that tomorrow. Um, but for now, I think we can build this idea of um, some showers during the coming weekend and then a breakdown to more, sig well, a more significant breakdown to cooler weather during next week. But always the north and the west seeing most of any rainfall, watching for this increased risk of thunderstorms across the east and the south of the country. So, I'll leave you that for now, but thanks again for watching weatherweb.net. And whatever you're doing today, have a great day and keep the sun shining. Bye for now.